Kevin here, coming back to you with episode five of the Savage Podcast. And as always, my fellow co-founders here, David from David Bluker's Videos and Collectibles and Harry from Harry Sandman PR Vlog YouTube. Uh, how are you guys doing today? What has your week been like, David? Yo, yo, yo. Um, thank you, Kevin. Um, and what's up, Harry? Good to be back on another episode with y'all. And how my week is doing? It is going pretty well. Uh, workflow has been kind of picking up a little bit, but uh, we are at the end of the, our yearly uh, uh, production run for the year. And we're doing, or in the process, or halfway done, should I say. They are. I'm not, because I'm, you know, just chilling like a villain. Uh, they are doing their inventory counts, so that means that they got to count all the product stuff that they got out there in the warehouse and everything. Then um, <clears throat> next week, on Tuesday, we go back to work, or some of us go back to work. And um, we start our work week again, a new, brand new year. So... That is that, and uh, as far as anything else goes, um, I did pick up a few items, you know, along the way. I did uh, stop at Movie Trading Company, and I did pick up uh, a couple of items here and there. Did pick up two Dragonfly figures, and if you don't know what Dragonflies are, it's a uh, it's a cartoon. It's a twine based on the cartoon, as what most cartoons are based off are twine lines if I said that correctly. Um, but it came out in the, the mid to the late 90s, I think. And it's by a company called Gloob. And it just basically, you could, you could watch the episodes on uh, YouTube if y'all are interested in it. But anyways, <clears throat> what it is is it basically figures that ride on these uh, um, statue-looking things, and they have a little cord where you pull, and then their head spins with the little wings. And it flies up in the air, you know, kind of like the old 80s toys where uh, back in the days where you pull that cord and the thing just flies off uh, uh, whatever it is that it's latched onto. Got that. I did get a uh, uh, Tiger, uh, LJ and Tiger for my uh, Thundercats collection. So now I have a uh, lion thanks to Kevin. And then I have a uh, Tiger and... Um, Remember all his his full form, I guess, not the mummy form. Uh, but I am looking for a panthro and a chitara to round out the Thundercats collection, along with you know the, the twins and uh, Snarf and all that, all that fun stuff. Um, and also, I did pick up a, a vintage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, the uh, Lionheart figure. No accessories. Surprisingly, I was able to pick these this guy up for like four dollars I think. And that's pretty cheap considering this figure is uh kinda hard to come by. Not not as rare as uh, uh Doctor L or or Half Court or any of those uh figures, but um he's up there, you know. But not all the way up there as far as rarity goes. But um uh, can't find none of the accessories though. But that's gonna be the challenging part. But other than that I'm just enjoying my, my long weekend because I know I'm not going to get too many more of these. And um, that's when the busy season will start to hit. So then I'll be working weekends, mostly Saturdays. Other than that, uh, I'm going to pass it along to you, Harry. How's your weekend? Been? Oh, uh, thank you, Dave. And, yeah, it's good to be doing episode five with you fellas. And uh, I don't know about you all, but this week was just one of those seems like it was never going to get to the weekend. It was like long. That's how my work week went. But it's uh, here we are Sunday recording. This is going to be our last episode in September. So um, I do have some content on my channel. I was able to attend a Star Wars swap meet of sorts toy show, if you want to use that term to describe it. It's basically a small gathering of like-minded collectors who meet together, they hang out, uh, they trade, sell, they give things away. It's a club, and I am now a member of that club. It is called the Kentucky Star Wars Collectors Club, and I'm an, I'm an official member. I joined yesterday. I attend 
It was just about 15 minutes away from my house. Uh, that content is up on my channel if anyone would like to check that out. Uh, I did win and get a few things that I didn't expect to get. Uh, I didn't have a large budget going into this. I just had a little bit, and with what I had, I was able to come away with some pretty cool additions. So, you know, I had a good time doing that. But, uh, you know, the leaves are changing, and October is upon us, and Halloween, and uh, that's my wife's. I think all of your wives as well are major Halloween nuts, and, you know, most women are. They like the pumpkin spice everything, and, you know, that's going on. But uh, I just want to talk to Kev about him letting you all, Dave and I already know, because we speak to Kevin every day and we talk to each other all the time, but Kev has been battling something on his health issue, and it, he just wants to let his fan base know what's what he's facing and what's going on. Hey guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, it's been a, a rough couple of weeks. Uh I've been having a lot of issues with my pancreas and with diabetes and it's been a struggle. I've wound up in the hospital a couple of weeks ago and uh I'm struggling with that, trying to get on track, though. So I got my eating right, but uh, still taking a while to get all my numbers straight as far as my blood sugar and everything and triglycerides. So I'm working on that. I took a week off of YouTube just to, to rest. And so that was the longest I've ever been off since I started the channel a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm <clears> sure nice. your your audience needs to know that you're fine, though, that you're not quitting YouTube or anything. Yeah, I I'm not quitting YouTube. I, I've already released a video yesterday, so I'm I'm back on the the kicking out videos again. So and I have a lot of footage to kick out since I took that long a break. There's a lot of stuff backed up, <laughs> and I got to do some hunting. Like uh, this week, I picked up a couple of vintage figures, and I started to grab some of those new lanyard Jumanji figures that uh, came out for the I guess for the upcoming sequel because. <laughs> What really attracted them to me is because, like, the the figures, the three and three quarters figures, are okay. They're not the greatest, but they're cool. But the animals is what gets me. If you go look into it, the average collector's stuff, they have a lot of figures, but they have really nice animals. And the ones, these are all, like, uh, they all have actions and they have uh, sound effects and stuff. So that really was cool to me. So I had to grab a couple. There's uh, They came out with uh, the rhino. The mega, there's three mega figures, which is the rhino, the mammoth, and uh, the hippo. Those are the biggest one. That's the fifteen dollar package, and they come with the rock. For some reason, they have all have the same rock, so you have rock three <laughs> times when you get those. But you need the three animals, and then they have yeah. smaller ones, which they have the bear and the tiger, and they also have uh, sound effects and action. And then they have this separate package where it's like five or six safari animals, and they're Jumanji also. Only one of those, I think it's like a wolf maybe, has a sound mm. effects, but they're all cool. They have birds and eagles and really cool packages. They're all 15 as well. So I thought that was uh, pretty cool. Yeah. So it's definitely like the, I picked uh, up Kev, a couple. I'm sorry, Kevin. I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, what I was going to say was that uh, <clears throat> it looks like they took the inspiration as far as their packaging goes was the Mattel's dress Park stuff. Now, if you look at the packaging as compared to, like, what uh, Mattel did for the Jurassic Park uh, World Wars, you know, same style packaging, got their own logo. And if you look on the, the animals, you can see the, the J mark, just like they did with the Jurassic Park back in the kinder days and stuff. So they got their own brand and everything. So they, it looks like they've actually took the inspiration from what Kenner did back then with the Jurassic Park line and what Mattel has done as far as their packaging goes, you know, as far as making it their own brand, you know. So hopefully um, a lanyard can get more movie license because so far, you know, I have, y'all know that I have all the Rampage and Skull Island and all that stuff. And the, uh, um, their previously released uh, Jurassic Clash, uh, line, you know, even though Jurassic 
class had been around for a while, a couple of years before we ever got any of them in the states. Uh, like it was a primal class, yeah, primal class. But I think Jurassic class was what they used overseas, and um, <clears throat> they've already had their line over there for a couple of years, and we just now got them like with beginning of this year, probably earlier this year, and uh, we was able to get a few of those as well. So it's really exciting that, you know, Landyard is actually getting involved into the movie toy business, you know, kind of like the rumors of uh, Trend Masters back in the day, or kind of reminds me of that, and uh, even Galoob, you know, when they did the, uh, the uh, Starship Trooper lines and all that stuff. So that's pretty it was really cool to see what what they have uh, in store in the coming years, what license they pick up, you know, especially with the quality of toys that they have. You know, even though they are on the low end, but, you know, they're worth it, you know, in my opinion, because they weren't, we wouldn't be buying them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but other than that, um, that, that's all i got to say about that one. You can go ahead and uh, continue, Kevin. Yeah, uh, the, definitely, like you were saying, the kind of low end, like especially for the, the actual, the humans, the action figure part, but for the animals, they're I think they're amazing. There's great articulation, and they have action, and they have sound effects, roars. I mean, that can't beat that. So definitely, personally, wanted to beef up the, the animals and stuff in my collection with these. Uh, aside from the Jurassic Park, like you said, they do look exactly like they're taking a, I mean, a Jumanji has taken a page from Jurassic Park. Even if you look at, like, how they show you where the actions are, it looks exactly like the imagery on the box is exactly how Jurassic Park, Jurassic World does it. Mm-hmm. And uh, aside from those, I picked up two of those. I ended up picking up the new Dino Commander from that Jurassic class you were speaking of. They did have two in the beginning. There was only two of the big one, which was the Triceratops and the Mammoth, and now they have this... Uh, the Plorodon? La Plorodon. Yeah, they have the La Plorodon. And they have the two uh, mega T-Rexes, a green yeah, one and a red one. Cool. Yeah, those would be a, a good addition. And, you know, the thing is, what, what trips people out is for a company like Lanyard to make something like that and for them to have, uh, if you, next time you go to HEB and you, you see them, uh, activate that the, the sound mechanism because it sounds exactly, it's like they actually, like, it sounds like they took, the actual roar from the original Jurassic Park, and it just sounds exactly like it, just the way it starts up and finishes, you know, and it's like it blows people's mind in the way that why well, couldn't somebody like Mattel make something like that with their T-Rexes, but a company like Lanyard was able to get an exact replica sound of the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. Now, I don't know if they actually took it from them. They might have. I don't know. But I'm just saying is just that you got a, a smaller company like that, that that was able to get a sound like that. But then Mattel, on the other hand, didn't have uh, access to something like that. You know, it kind of makes you wonder, you know. And for a very low price point, which is crazy. I mean, you're getting all this extra, and it's very low on the wallet. <laughs> and it comes with an action figure as well in the package. Yeah. Plus the sound effects, and it lights up. It's supposed to be... I don't think it's a traditional, I'm not sure, it's supposed to be a monster, so I don't know if this is a traditional T-Rex or like some kind of lab created, because it has lights and stuff too, so who knows. It looks really cool though. you got to gotta get a hand on one of those, man. So all my ATBs have them now. I, don't, I think they're 20 for the biggest one, 20 bucks, but still that's pretty cheap for such a large, I mean, he's over a foot tall. Oh, I imagine. Uh, I don't. I don't think I have ATB in my area. Uh, well, I, I do, but nothing like like close to me to where I can be like, oh, I can stop one on the way to work, like I would everything else. I think I'd have to drive like on the opposite end the direction that I'm going to. But one day, I, I think I did look up um, one of those uh, ATB plus stores, whatever it is that y'all have. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, we have one hit. We have we have some around the area. I just I just gotta take the time to to go out there and, and look and see what they got because it might be different. You know, all stores are different. Yeah, for <clears> sure. 
our uh, Super HEB that we have, well, it's actually an hour away from me. It's an hour drive. Oh, but yeah. that one, is, it's comparable to a Super Walmart. They have toys, they have clothing, they have furniture, they have barbecue area, and the groceries, yeah. of course, because it is primarily a grocery store. But they, they're they comparable to a Walmart, so it's an amazing store to shop at. That's it's cheaper than Walmart. That's where you was able to get the solo figures, huh? Right, yeah. The solo for like only a, a, a dollar or two. What it, I think it was like $2 a pop. I can't believe that shit, man. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much all of them. I just started buying again, so I got those few figures. They're all lanyards, and I really like them, so I still have to, like, do some type of video for them. Yeah, I'm and, uh, that. yeah it's going to be fun. Tear them apart. Because I also picked up some uh, Halloween decoration, like like uh, rat skeletons and stuff, for a couple bucks. Mm-hmm. But they're the right size for the three and three quarter inch. So I want to do a little custom kit bash and put saddles on them and maybe like see what they look like with the skeleton warrior figures. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, I guess we'll jump into our first topic. Sure. <laughs> and I'll I'll pass that off to Harry. Okay. So let's talk about. Uh... WWE's deal with Fox starting this Friday, October 4th, SmackDown Live is going to be exclusively on Fox Sports, I think, Fox Sportnet or whatever it's called, FS1, or or is it just regular as Fox? I think it's it's Fox Sportsnet. Yeah, that sounds, so that sounds it's a about big right. deal. It's a big deal. This is a one <clears throat> billion dollar deal. McMahon could potentially bank a billion dollars from Fox if they could meet Fox almost unachievable targets of ratings they're expecting SmackDown to do in this time slot. Wow. You remember the old days when SmackDown used to be on Friday? On yeah, UPN. Back in the UPN, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But here was the problem. People go out on Fridays. They don't stay home and watch TV on Fridays. Yeah, that's true. That's going to hurt them having that day. If they want to hit these numbers and they put it on a Friday, that's the first dumb move. But, I mean... Uh, for the next five years, you know, Ronda Rousey was a big reason this deal even went through, and she's hurt. And it's kind of Fox's fault that she's hurt because she was filming a television show, what Kevin does for a living, that it was their 911 show. She was doing an episode of that, you know, EMS episode, and she got hurt on the set. Wow. She almost lost a, a, a finger. Permanently. And uh, so now she's healing from that. She was already recovering from what happened to her hand at WrestleMania in the triple threat match with uh, Becky Lynch and Charlotte. And now this happens. And she's not going to be able to be uh, probably spring of next year is when she'll be clear to wrestle. So y'all have some opinions on what's going on? What do you think your chances that this is going to be a good relationship or is it going to shoot McMahon in the foot? Is this going to cost the WWE? Uh, I personally think it, it'll it better them because just because with uh, everybody leaving and doing the AEW thing and it seemed like morale was kind of low for a while. And this is, I mean, Fox is huge for sports. I think it can only help, you know, if, not a lot. It'll help some, I think, anyway. Well, uh, it can be a good or bad move, and you know how you want to look at it. Uh, as far as the, the bad, in my opinion, they should have probably at least had it on Thursday. You know, Thursday probably would have been a better time slot than uh, in a Friday night. But I don't know what their schedule is. So I'm, Pretty sure there's a reason why they picked a Friday night or gave that to them. I don't know if that was Fox's choice or the WWE's choice. Um, I'm pretty sure they looked into all the history and everything. I don't think 
Fox Sports was dumb enough to sign on a deal. They didn't think that was going to work for them and their favor, you know. And but <clears throat> I, who knows? Uh, as far as the good standpoint goes, um, it all. I think it's a good thing for a lot of the wrestlers now because you know, like um, Kevin mentioned, that the morale and everything. Um, it was an all-time low for a while. But now I think they got the, something to look forward to. So that's why Fox was like wanting all these characters to, to come over. Like they wanted The Fiend. They wanted the, um, like all the, the big stuff. They wanted Brock Lesnar. And like, mm. like Harry said, you know, they wanted uh, Ronda. Uh, Ronda, yep. Rep, Ronda. You know, they, 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 they needed some kind of star power to get, get their foot in the ground. Right. Um, but, um, I mean, we'll see how it goes, you know. Who, I mean, who's a bigger draw in the WWE these days, bigger than Lesnar? Everyone complains about him being a part timer, but the fact of the matter still stands traction. when, when Lesnar is on the card, people watch because they know something crazy is going to happen when that dude's there. Yeah, because he's, he's an, an attraction and he's gotten smarter. As time went on, I, mean, I, I understand that he, his first run was in, was was phenomenal, but at the same time he just lost his desire. But over time, now he's up there in age as far as his business standpoint. He knew what was going to work, what wasn't. Why do you think he jobbed out to Goldberg the way he did? You know. Why do you think he was jobbed out to Seth Rollins the way all these quick matches and stuff? You know, it, it didn't hurt them. It didn't hurt him in the long run. You know, it, it made the other people better. You know, he can he knows how to make people better. You know, without hurting him, his character in the long run. Because everybody knows that if Brock wanted to, he could just beat the fuck out of everybody. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but. But, you know, he, he he's smart. He knows how to play his cards right. He knows how to deal and handle with uh, his matches the way he wants it. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, he's like, hey, you know, this is the way I want it done. Are you, are you good with this? You know, not. Nah, yeah. You know. You know. But, um, uh, but to answer your original question, um, I don't think they do have anybody – that's a major draw like that. I mean, all those people are gone. Cena's gone. Ronda, gone. Ronda would have been the closest thing to Lesnar's drawing power, and now she's hurt. So, and Fox yeah. can only blame himself because she got hurt filming a TV show. You know, and 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 in the wrestling business, you know, when you when you wrestle for a, a, not only a promotion, but when you have a show on. Uh, <clears throat> on the on the station, it, it's kind of like football. Same thing. You're you, when you sign that contract, you you have an agreement saying, "Hey, this is what we're going to do, but we're only going to allow you to do this and that. If not, then if uh, if you do do these things that we don't want you to do, then that's a breach of contract. So if you breach the contract, then your ass is bye bye. You know, so, right? Uh, it, it's probably one of those things, you know, that, you know, she probably had to have permission from the WWE and Fox, and they just said, okay, yeah. that's fine. But, you know, shit happens. Right. Well, let me give you guys a little more info on the deal, how this affects USA Networks, because they were in jeopardy of losing the rights to Raw, too. And you know USA, without the WWE, that channel doesn't have anything. It has... <laughs> yeah. It has prominently leaned on the WWE for so many years. They cannot exist without it. So they are now paying Vince just as much money to have the rights for Raw as they were paying to have both Raw and SmackDown. It's the time calls for desperate measures. <clears throat> Sure. Plus, they're gaining the NXT is going to be. It's already on USA now, actually. So, they they lost SmackDown, but they gained NXT on Wednesdays, mm-hmm. and that's going to face off directly with AEW's product that goes live this week as well. This Wednesday 
on TNT, AEW's weekly program begins on cable television. What do you think of that, Kev? It's pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, I think as important as it is to have, like, the platform, like a big platform like Fox or, like, these channels, he's going to have to loosen up those wallets and try to get talent. I think that's ultimately going to, like you're saying with, with uh, Brock and with them, they need to get out, go and get some fresh young talent that's making big waves, you know, and, and lock them down with contracts, too. I well, think there's some the big thing. stars. That was the whole purpose of the performance center. center. Triple H has this dream of just having a farming system like every other sport has, but for Kinda wrestling like talent. Florida. Well, isn't but, that what their Florida powerhouse thing is for? Yeah, that's what that's the performance center, right? Okay. You can technically go there, get accepted, follow the regimen, and graduate as a pro wrestler, and then be worked into NXT. And whether you make it there or not really depends on you know it's on you at that point. Can you uh, promote yourself? Can you self-promote on social media? Social media understanding is critical in the business now like never before. There are guys in the indies who are making good money because of social media. Smart. Smart how they can do that. They don't have to work for Vince if they don't want to. It's And that's a good thing. Booker T put it best when he said on his podcast show, Vince McMahon can't employ every wrestler. There needs to be other places to work for these guys. It can't just be one company that pays every wrestler. They need to have other avenues. And thanks to self-promoting on Instagram, YouTube, you name it, uh, Reddit, uh, Twitter, if you can harness a following virtually uh, – on social media, then they will come to see you when you're in their town. And if you become a draw, promoters are going to pay attention to that. And your numbers on social media will dictate what your cut of the, the purse is when the night is over and the, they calculate ticket sales. And that wrestler is going to make potentially more than this other guy that uh, he just does it on weekends because he's in love with, you know, he wants to be a, he's a hobbyist pro wrestler. Versus someone who is making a living on the indies. <clears throat> right. I've always liked how uh, Vince has the circulation of the wrestlers working, though. You know, he would, he would have them in the WWE. They would do a good eight-month stretch, burn them out, like with the fans, and then they would leave, go do TNA, go do Wrestling Honor. They'd bring in new people for a while, but it seemed like they had this rotation thing going in the background, you know? Mm-hmm. And you'd see him again, like you'll see just, for example, the gold dust, because I like gold dust. You see him, you may not see him for another year or more, and then he gets put back in the main event, you know, again for a while and becomes tag team champ again. And right. I, It seems like they've all rotated like that, and it's worked well to have, like you said, maybe some smaller venues where they can go and keep working for a while when their usefulness is over temporarily mm-hmm. with WWE. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Dave, you had some information you were going to share with us because apparently John Morrison is in talks with uh, Top Brass of WWE about returning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there have been reports uh, that uh, John Morrison has officially signed uh, with WWE. Uh, how true that is, I don't know. Um, I don't know all the information on that, but that's just what the word is going out. Um, hopefully, um, after his time with being in with uh, Lucha Underground and uh, with, with Impact Wrestling and, uh, and other places uh, around the independents, um, I don't think he ever worked for Ring of Honor. I don't think he went there. Um, <clears throat> it's just kind of surprising because I figured that his next stop would probably would have been AEW or uh, Ring of Honor. But I guess, you know, as with any talent, that comes back for a second or third stint with the WWE, they always, I mean, look, look at Drew McIntyre. Even though mm-hmm. he's, he's um, sitting on the sidelines for the time being, you know, mm-hmm. his time away from the WWE right. allowed him to become a better wrestler for it, to allow yeah. him to come back and to be where he is now. And I right. think John Morrison is in that same predicament as well. Drew, Drew is a phenomenal Cinderella Man story for sure. Oh, yeah. 
and um, <clears throat> hopefully that they'll be able to do something with him. He, he might be a, a SmackDown uh, wrestler, you know. It would be kind of cool because I'd like to see him with the Miz again. You know, I, I thought that was a pretty... Well, his old um, entrance? His old yeah. entrance? Would he come out with yeah. the uh, slow-mo and stuff? Mm-hmm. Diva hair yeah, I was trying to remind Kevin who he was because I don't think Kevin. But then when I brought up his original gimmick, Johnny Nitro, then Kevin vaguely remembered him. Eminem. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah. Uh, aside from that, um, there is also word going around that Ring of Honor it might be bought out by Impact Wrestling. What? How, yeah. Now this is a couple of weeks old, but you would no, think Ring of Honor good. would have more money than Impact. Yeah, you would think, but I guess that's not the case. But that's that's the word going around town. I don't like I said, it's just rumors, so I don't know how true these are. But uh, yeah, but yeah, it, 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 apparently Impact's in talks of trying to with a. Uh, Sinclair Entertainment, I think Sinclair, whoever owns the, the people that own Ring of Honor, is a, they're looking to sell apparently. Mm. Um, but uh, in other news, the last bit of news that I have, um, the guy that used to play uh, portray like, Razor Ramon, uh, Rick uh, or Bonger, or yeah, Rick Bonger, who uh, played uh, portrayed the, the fake Razor Ramon. Back in '96, early '97, um, <clears throat> passed away. He was only 49 years. I think he was 49 years old. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm just going by off the top of my memory. So, um, if, if you're interested more to learn more about that, you know, you always welcome to Google that and stuff. But um, apparently, I don't know what he died of. Mm-hmm. But apparently, he uh, passed away this week. Uh, just recently, I think it was like you. Know, yesterday or the day before mm. um and um he was known as big titan when over in japan because he had a, a pretty decent career in japan mm-hmm. and then uh apparently when was it the when, fake uh, razor or the fake diesel i'm confused because you said razor yeah fake razor but he would he would go by titan yeah big titan in japan that was his uh wrestling name over in japan okay and, uh, and uh, <clears throat> apparently he had the look and he had the voice. And when Scott Hall and Kevin Nash apparently went to WWE or WCW, um, they wanted to cut. They didn't like the fact that uh, WCW was using the likeness and the, and the catchphrases and all that that they were used to hearing in the WWE. So that's why that's where all this copyright characters started was because right. they, they wanted to make sure that we know we don't own you as a person, but we own your character. So that's, yeah. what, what, that's what we have. And so when they saw Big Titan over there in Japan, you know, and they, they decided, well, we're going to bring him in. We're going to have him fill in for the Razor Ramon character. Yeah. You know, so that's what they did. And apparently, yeah. I don't know how that works went out and you know Kane he's the one that played fake diesel Glenn Jacobs oh Kane 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 was the fake diesel yeah Glenn Jacobs okay he was was Isaac Yankton but then then he was diesel the fake diesel and then then finally Kane apparently there's a special on the network right now about the night Kane debuted during the very first Hell in the Cell when he came through the ring and a tack taker while he was fighting Shawn Michaels. There's a special about how it all went down that night, like from the point of view of all three men, Taker, HBK, and Kane. And uh, Tim uh, Overquill, Hunt and Halls, he was telling me that there was a much watch. It was a must watch documentary about the night Kane. I haven't seen it yet. No, but I want to. I haven't had the time, but I will. Yeah. That should be a, a fun episode to take a look at. But, uh, yeah, that that's all I got for that. Um, uh, let me elaborate more on the, the uh, Rick Bonger and his character as the fake Razor Ramon. They apparently, when he came in, uh, even though that was a dud, 
even Scott Hall reached out to him and said, "Hey, you could have some of my old uh, race Ramon ring gear if you want. You know, I'll, I'll sell it to you." You know, <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, I can see Scott Hall doing that shit. That's but uh, uh, apparently, towards the end of that, um, the reason why we never saw him in the WWE ever again after that gimmick was because I think um, his contract was renewed, was up for renewal, and you know he called Vince himself and was like, "Hey, um, contract coming up. Well, what you got for me? You know, we got something else for me." And he's like, "Hey." Don't ever call his number again. And that was that. They <laughs> set out the remainder of his contract and went back to Japan, and yeah. uh, it just wasn't the same, you know. Did he work steady in Japan afterwards? Uh, probably so, a little bit, but it wasn't like it was in the beginning. But yeah, they messed him up, pulling him from what he was doing and then sending him back as damaged goods. Yeah, basically. All right. So, well, I think we spent enough time on this, Kev. You want to transition to the next hot topic, and that's uh, your favorite webhead? Absolutely. So uh, I guess this is something that's uh, relatively new information, right? And it's going to be that uh, Sony and Disney finally worked out their little dispute there and their disagreement, and uh, Sony's getting a little more money, so we're getting Spidey back. Yay! <laughs> Did you say 25%? Is that what I heard you say earlier? Disney's cut for the future, the third and final Tom Holland film, staying alone in the far from home, homecoming line, is 25% now of the profits will be Disney's instead of 5%. Nice. And in return, Disney gets to use Spidey in one more appearance of their choosing in any of the phase four movies that are coming as Tom Holland. Wow. It's just a one-time deal on both sides. And then it will be complete and then it can renegotiate what happens to Spidey after that. By then I'm sure Sony will make a deal to, they've offered Spider-Man's rights to Disney, but Disney doesn't want to give them $15 billion. They only no, gave George Lucas. They only gave George Lucas four billion for the rights of Star Wars. How are they going to give Sony fifteen billion for one character? Wow, yeah, that's a little crazy. But that's the price Sony has put on Spider Man, and they know Disney won't go down that hole deliberately. But you got to understand that uh, that Sony needs Disney more than Disney needs Sony. I mean, Disney can do whatever the fuck they want. They'd be all right. Sony ain't going to be all right. That's why they had to have that uh, their own spinoff with the Venom thing because they are desperate for something. And and the thing about that is um, not only does uh, – actually, I think Tom Holland got the better end of the deal because once he finishes out the, uh, the MCU thing mm-hmm. – um, they can still use him as Spider-Man for other movies. It probably won't tie in with the MCU, but right, it'll be standalone stories. stories, right? So yeah, so not only will he be working for Sony, he'll be working with Disney again one one last time, you know. So that's something that's I think that's that is the that that is the first time that I think ever that an actor can. Uh, portray a character under two umbrellas on on separate movies. Yeah, it's complicated shit for sure. But uh, how should how should uh, Andrew Garfield be feeling right now, Kevin, as the only bloke who didn't get a trilogy? Because Tom Holland's gonna have a trilogy like the original <laughs> dude. Failure. <laughs> Poor guy, but a lot of it was him too. I heard. I heard he was very difficult. Oh, I heard he was a mega prima donna on set. Yeah, like, so he kind of probably partially did it to himself. They would have pushed for him if they liked him. Like I feel like Andrew would be a better fit for Tom, for Tom Hardy Venom than Tom Holland would be. Yeah, would oh, be Venom himself. Yeah. No, 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 no. I think the Andrew Garfield Spider Man would fit in the Venom universe better than Tom Holland's Spider-Man would. 
Ah, oh, gotcha. I think uh, I think that Andrew Garfield is more edgy than Tom, and it would fit in Tom Hardy's acting style better than to, Holland is just too too much of a lovable kid. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And Andrew is just more of this, you know, mid twenties already. Uh, sure of what he can do with his powers. This, this is not a learning to be Spider Man guy. This guy it was Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that, Eric. I think uh the amazing Spider Man franchise would would have missed very well with the Venom film, you know. And um it sadly as it may seem, you know, it's too bad that we didn't get the, the rest of the series that they had originally planned for because um, that's why they were setting up the Sinister Six. Yeah, you know, they were. And, mm-hmm. and apparently they just pulled a cord on it halfway into it. You know, Paul mm-hmm. Giamonti as a mechanized version of Rhino. That was going to be really nuts. Yeah, it really was. The way they left the cliffhanger at the end, it's like it's a shame that we didn't get the conclusion of that film, yeah. you know. So... Yeah, well, it is what it is. So just, I guess we just, just got to be happy with, that we're getting this, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm happy if Kevin's happy. I'm happy. I never really liked uh, Andrew Garfield, to be honest with you. I don't know why, but just growing up, and I was a huge comic geek growing up, and I always envisioned Spider-Man to be kind of like this Tom Holland kid. Like, mm-hmm. you know, he's a goody goody high school boy and mm-hmm. he's to his grandparents. And mm-hmm. I get that vibe for him. I always got the vibe that Spider Man had to jump into these crazy stuff, but as an innocent good kid, you know, and he had to find his yeah. way. That's kind of how I feel with this new kid. I mean, even though I love uh, McGuire, I just felt like he oh, was like kind of reaching out to be Jeez, younger than man. he was. <laughs> McGuire was like, he was on estrogen or something. He stayed crying all the freaking time in his movies. <laughs> and it was like after they killed Uncle Ben, he was always crying. <laughs> Poor Uncle Ben. How many more times is Uncle Ben going to die? <laughs> I'm tired of these uh, origin stories when they kick out. I know they're doing it for the non-fans too to get everybody in on it, but yeah, like who don't know that by now? Like that's yeah. like them redoing Batman's origin every time they get a like for the Twilight dude when he gets his movie, and apparently <laughs> it was just announced that they want who was it that they're casting? Jonah Hill is going to be cast as the villain in that movie. Wow, he can be the penguin. They don't know if he's Penguin or Riddler or a combination Penguin Riddler hybrid or something. <laughs> A new character. Yeah, a made up character. That's like what they did with Gotham. They made up half their villains in there. I love how everybody everybody was assuming he was gonna be penguin because he's fat, but <laughs> Jonah Hill has done roles where he's lost tremendous amounts of weight. Yeah, yeah. Like, like look at the ones he did with Channing Tatum, the twenty one yeah. jump street movies. <laughs> I agree, though. He's one of those dudes when he's not fat, he looks really, he looks weird. Not yeah. fat. And it's been proven that they lose their their, their comedy abilities. They're lost when they get skinny. <laughs> it get goes with the fat. <laughs> well, he's already, like, producing and directing already. Jonah is not hurting money-wise. No. So he got his he, own production company too. Yeah, yeah, he's he's got money. He's good. He did that thing on Netflix that didn't really do so hot. Him and Emma Stone, that weird oh, yeah. thing about psycho stuff. Yeah, yeah, plugging them into the chairs and they live in different lives and stuff. Yeah, I I couldn't get into it. I, after two episodes, I was like, nah, I really don't care how this ends. I'll stop watching now. <laughs> We're at our uh, fifteen minute mark now. Dave's Corner sounds like, and then we'll wrap it Dave up. Corner. Dave Corner. Dave Corner. Transition. All right, guys. Y'all know how this works, so we're just going to get right into it. Um, as you know, this past week, uh, the releases on Blu-ray, the main release last week was the Child's Play remake. 
Uh, but other than that, it was just basically re-releases of previous movies that have been released like maybe five times already. So <clears throat> next week will be October 1st for Tuesday. Uh, the main release for this one is Spider-Man uh, uh, Far From Home. So we'll be getting the 4K release, still book, DVD, Blu-ray, you know, all that fun stuff. Um, I'm not seeing anything when it comes to a box set, but I would think that they would make a a, a box set for both films. Um, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna probably gonna wait till the third film comes out, since we're actually gonna get a third film. <clears throat> but um, as far as anything else goes, just a bunch of 4K releases that probably haven't been released to these movies yet, uh, like The Shining, Pan's Labyrinth, Gremlins, uh, most of the uh, uh, rest of the uh, Marvel movies like Doctor Strange and Guardians of the Galaxy that, that hadn't got the uh, 4K release yet, uh, Ant-Man and so forth. Um, also, let's see what else is coming out. Uh, they got an Adam's Family movie two-pack that's coming out. And also... Uh, the DC uh, movie uh, they got a seven film set that's coming out as well so all seven films that have been made by Warner Brothers the live action DC stuff that's coming out with a huge box set uh, like Aquaman, Shazam, Wonder Woman and so forth you know it's starting with uh, Man of Steel of course that, that's what kicked off the whole uh, DC universe for them <clears throat> And also, uh, Target has a special release, uh, two set with the original Halloween, which is going to be packaged with the, uh, the one that came out last year that's supposed to be the, the unofficial sequel to, uh, the original Halloween. So I guess we're no longer, we're going to disregard the original Halloween two <laughs> in favor of this one. So. That's what they got going on. And apparently there's going to be a fourth Jarhead film. I didn't even know there was four movies. I knew there was like maybe two before. I didn't know they had a a four film deal. But apparently there's a, a, a four movie collection of Jarhead being released as well. And also the uh, Death of Superman, the Death and Return of Superman 2-pack will be released at the animation uh, guys, if you had not seen both those films, uh, I highly recommend both of them. I saw them. Uh, me and Eileen went to go see uh, the, those movies. Uh, I think I think it was at one of the Cinemarks out of town. Uh, but yeah, that that was a pretty nice uh, double feature there. So if you had, I'm pretty sure both of y'all have seen Death of Superman, but Return of Superman. That's the new film, so watch those back to back. It's, it's pretty amazing. I highly recommend that. Um, and then that's it that I got for the media releases, but as far as uh, theater releases, um, pretty much the same thing. You know, the, the the animation, abominable. You know, about the snowman. You know, or the snow monster down uh, Downton Abbey. Then we got Rainbow, The Last Blood. That I still have yet to see. Hustlers, Ad Astra, Hit Chapter 2, The Lion King, Good Boys, Angel Has Fallen, Overcomer, The Peanut Butter Falcon, Dora and the Last, uh, Dora and the Lost City of the Gold, and Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Then, as far as the um, uh, $2 theater goes, let's see, I'm pretty sure it's yeah, Spider Man is probably the highlight of that. And then Aladdin, the live action Aladdin. Then Secret Life of Pets 2, followed by Blinded by the Light, Where Did You Go, Bernadette. And then a couple of uh, foreign films uh, from India are playing up there. So, but yeah, that's all I got for Dave's Corner. Awesome. This week's segment of Dave's Corner brought to you in part by Jewel. The smooth vaping vapors of Jewel. Fuck you, I'm vaping. I'm responsible for heart disease and lung cancer. <laughs> I'll see if we can reach out and get a get an ad for us. All right. Jewel's enough. Lantern toys, man. Lantern toys. 
be our first sponsor. Step up. Yeah. You can afford yeah. us. You could so, pay us in toys. That's right. right. Just send us one of everything. Right. Yeah. Send it free for us to review, and we'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it. You know, we'll, we'll put it out there. <laughs> We're cheap, <laughs> Lantern. You can afford us. <laughs> Double the prices on eBay. Oh, you are that hole. <laughs> Scalping, low key. You know, when's uh, when's uh, when's Joker dropping? Next month. Oh, that's gonna be a big deal. They're they're really worried that this is gonna cause people to go to the theater and like cause mass shootings and stuff. Kind of movie. I heard that. Yeah. Like what happened when the Dark Knight Rises debuted. Remember that horrible thing that happened in Colorado? Yeah, he went and shot up a bunch of Batman movies. Yeah, he was inside. Corner. It was in where the screen was, and there he just started pulling people away. Terrible. And that's what hurt that movie's box office, because they were banking on that movie to surpass uh, the Dark Knight, and because of that, that's what scared a lot oh, of people yeah. away from the Yeah, people didn't go out, yeah. And that's why my idea I was saying last week that Kevin said his family would do it if it was an option, being able to watch movies when they debut at home, but at a higher price to not have to go out. Yeah. For sure. That's crazy. This is crazy. uh, There's a couple of things. uh, Well, we just had uh, the new American Horror Story just started. Fall's always a great time for good series to watch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we got American Horror Story. I think uh, Family Guy is coming out with a new season today. Uh, there's really? a few others. Yeah, Family today, Guy. What what number is that for them? Gee, 18? it feels like they've been on TV forever. Yeah, they did the first three seasons and then they got kicked off. Fox. All right, right. Out, and then they right. Came and back. Economy <laughs> Central is what resurrected them, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And then so, TBS. They've been on TBS for so long. I've been watching them so long on Netflix and now Hulu that I have no and idea. You can't remember. You can't remember a time. Well, well, I know one thing we're all excited about is Rick and Morty season four final. Yes. When is that? That's October or November. November. Right? October. 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 I'm so ready. I mean, how long have we waited? It seems like season three was like nine million years ago. I still got to review the toys. I still got enough <laughs> ready to be reviewed. You hear that, Lantern? <laughs> I remember when Kevin, uh, when I told him about that, I saw toys at the uh, at Series Two at GameStop one day. Oh man, Kevin went crazy for that shit. He was like a fiend looking for crack. Hey, uh, put, know, put Lantern on the thumb, Kev. When if you can, put Lantern on the thumb somehow if you can. Uh, for this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Did you got anything you, to say about the uh, the War Machine repaint real quick before we end this? Uh, I know that it's big. Everybody's after it right now as far as the toy hunting community and collector's community. And what's your knowledge of it? Is it truly just GameStop or are they finding it other places too? Only GameStop is what anyone has found it so far at Game nowhere else. And so what, because, what about the other one that we already knew that was coming, the face paint one? Is he also GameStop only, or is he anywhere? Only GameStop. Whoa. He's easier to find, though. I've been to three or four GameStops that says they have never received Punisher War Machine, but they all uh-huh. have the, the Punisher. The face paint one is there, and he's got that reused head from the vintage card it. Punisher. Yeah, all of it's reissue. Even the paint, face paint's reissue from Nemesis. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Well, y'all have fun with that. I'll skip it. <laughs> You'll be after Lanyard. You'll yep. be after that. He wants Lanyard Toys to do the Barbecue Becky series. Hell, yeah. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that David, uh, oh. David told me about the new uh, Rick and Morty. That's the day I had a... Uh, Harry do a skit with me, and I went and bought the whole damn series like in one buy. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and I waited. Morning. Until I went on clearance. Morning. <laughs> I got hey, some Saskatchewan sun. 
I got some Szechuan sauce for sale, y'all. <laughs> Hit your boy up. I could work Hit out a deal. PayPal ready. Do y'all have Hulu? I yes. do. There is a, a show, it's episode one, of someone redoing uh, Rick and Morty. They're using the same characters and everything, but it's worse graphics, like they're purposely making it look really bad, and it's different voice actors. It's hilarious, and it's a lot more edgy. They talk some bad stuff, worse than Rick and Morty is. Jeez, it's called oh. Bush Bush Hill something or Bush something. What and in it's the a world? Gem. It's a good <clears throat> But it's completely Rick and Morty characters and all, but they're just done like real crude looking drawings. What and, the uh, yeah. hell? Yeah, How's that not Rick, illegal? I don't know, but they're talking bad, like it's dirty. <laughs> it's it's adult swim. Well, if adult swim is involved, then that's the only reason why it is being allowed, because of Rick and Morty's adult swim. And they must have given permission if it's not them already. They have permission to do it because it's I mean, they yeah, copy everything the music, the music, the, music the name. It's in house. Yeah, check it out. If you get a chance, check it out. It's hilarious. <laughs> Search what on Hulu again? It's called Bush, Bush, Bush Something Adventures, something like that. Just just Google Bush something. No problem. Bush something. Um, yeah, that 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 bring some interesting results. <laughs> but search <laughs> on Hulu, not on Google. Google like two bait. Don't Google <laughs> that, right? No. Yeah, Don't Google Bush something. Bush something. 31 Days of Horrors. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think of that. Remember, Let's go ahead uh, oh, and... Oh, yeah. yeah. We almost forgot. <laughs> the one for Harry <laughs> and his bomb-ass memory. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, I was going to issue out everybody a challenge, you know, that's listening to this podcast, and including my two co-hosts. I uh, would like for y'all to do a 31 Days of Horror Challenge. And what that is, is basically you can take any horror film, whether it's your physical media or <clears throat> digital media, whatever, whatever platform you prefer, um, you just find 31 horror movies, no matter what it is. And each day you can watch uh, one movie a day. And... Um, yeah, that's basically it. It's real simple, you know. Or you can, depending on what you got going on, you can watch two movies a day. Or on the weekends, you can watch double movies. Wow. Uh, whatever, whatever you decide to do, as long as it's horror, you know. And as long as you get thirty-one of them right, in the month. As long as you get thirty-one, I don't give a shit. You know? I might have to do like five on the weekends and none during the week. <laughs> <laughs> Play catch it. There have been times I've done that before. There have been years where I've had to do that before. Ten on the weekend. Ten on the weekend of the next four weekends. <laughs> Go ahead and knock it all at one shot. But, um, some, but yeah, some comment down below. After, uh, Kev already did. He, he already watched them in his mind, remember? He passed. Oh, he did. That's right. So for all you listeners out there. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, for all you listeners out there, uh, comment down below and uh, let us know if you're up to a challenge and then keep us updated throughout the uh, each week on we do podcasts because I know next weekend or whenever we do episode six I will update y'all on what I've watched and stuff. But I do know imagine how easy this challenge would be if it was somebody who was a vendor in their shop oh, yeah. and they just literally watched Shutter all day long and night. <laughs> They would be done and they would be done in two days. That's thirty one horror movies right there. Yeah. I do know I do know the first movie that I'm gonna be watching is Attack of the Killer Donuts. Ooh. I gotta see that. I gotta see that. It's Never dumb. heard of it. I love donuts. You know the good thing about this challenge is now that it's October, uh, all these uh all our streaming services, they're kicking yeah. out tons of free movies to watch as far as for Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're everywhere, yep. Netflix, Hulu. And then if you don't, mm-hmm. if, if the two people that don't own Netflix or Hulu or have a service, uh, you can always get the Tubi for free. And it has it a ton has of ads. cheesy. Yeah, they got ads. Not too bad, though. <laughs> it's yeah, like it's not bad. To Hulu. Yeah. yeah, I could see you say that. But it's free, though. It's, it's free. free, though. So there's no reason to not do the challenge. You yeah, don't have to so pay a You got no excuse. 
But you can you can also use YouTube because I found some pretty good ass. So scary what if movies. they only have radio and they don't have the internet? Oh well. man! <laughs> use your imagination with that one. Yeah. Be like a like a silent. How, how are they listening to us on the radio? <laughs> radio has YouTube, I guess. <laughs> Radio, radio killed the video star. Yes, and then digital killed everything else. <laughs> radio killed the toy tubers. Now, Kevin, I do know there's one movie I like. To, you probably have already seen it, but uh, Doll Man, by Full Moon Entertainment. Have you seen that movie, Doll Man? Doll Man, I don't think I have. <laughs> oh, check that out. Gotta, that's, that's a good Doll good Man. One. Okay. Doll I'll look it up. Man, yeah. I have to wait till everybody goes, though, because my wife gets pissed when I put these movies on. She hates them all. She doesn't <laughs> like any of them that I watch, but I watch those ones with ridiculous titles, you know, like yeah. Cyborg, Killer Gorilla from Hell, Part yeah. 3. She's like, three? Who so made three of those? <laughs> <laughs> Ice Shark. Well, like, I got shit on me. <laughs> hey, you just got to tell a sperm whale ain't got shit on you. <laughs> Not even killer, number one. Killer sperm whales from Lake Placid. Yeah, That's right. <laughs> you know they made four movies, including a spinoff with Anaconda. So it's like basically Lake Placid versus the Anaconda. That's that's true. True story. Yep. Well, I, I like want that a, one. I've seen a all horror movie based on the sperm whale. Man, somebody make it happen. <laughs> I like all of those movies. Moby Dick. Number one was the best because since they had actual good actors in that one, they actually put more into the special effects and CGI. The rest, it got worse and worse. <laughs> oh, Moby Dick versus Predator. Somebody should make that. I like the Moby Dick when the, the Moby Dick 2010 that they came out. The with. one that had Thor in it? No. Didn't, didn't the guy with Thor, didn't he make one? Yeah. Heart of the Sea or something like that? Yeah, something like that, yeah. I want Predator versus Moby Dick. I'm too scared. Yeah, it's too scary. It's too scary down there. Too scary down there, yeah. He will be able Even to talk it. about something scary, Google yeah. what the original Predator costume was going to look like before Van Damme quit the role. Oh, yeah, they're going to make How a hot stupid toy it figure looked. that. Oh, it looks so it retarded. Good. Is it Nick going to make a figure of that? For like the 100th figure or some shit? Like it was that? supposed to be, yeah. The 100th Predator. Oh, It was based on the original concept, but that's not what made it to the set. That's not what the studio sent them for Van Damme to wear. He was not a happy camper. He looked like a fucking praying mantis. He's like, how am I going to display my martial arts in this? <laughs> And they're like, you're invisible for like half the movie, bro. And he's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'll just make my own movies like normal. He's like, screw it. Yeah. I'm going to do my splits all day long. <laughs> I got a question for both of you. What movie did Jean-Claude Van Damme appear in with Arnold Schwarzenegger before he did The Expendables? What movie? Yep. No googling. No googling, guys. Don't cheat. No googling. No googling. Don't, don't. I, I can see y'all. Y'all are googling. Get off. The I know the answer. Why do I need to Google? I I know the answer. Yeah, we know it. We're just waiting for someone else yeah. to say it first. Yeah, we just we know the answer. We just wait for somebody to say something first. Fuck it. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised amazing. David doesn't know. You have this I, line that was made by Mattel Toys in 1990, blah, 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 93. Oh, I told you, yeah. Demolition Man? No, Last Action Hero. Oh, no, Last oh, Action Hero. No, 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 no. That's right. You remember the scene where he comes in on a motorcycle on a red carpet? Yeah, yeah, no. And the boy says, oh, look, it's Jean-Claude Van Damme. And, and Arnold's like, yeah, who's he? He doesn't look that impressive to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He was in Last Action Hero. So well, that was the movie. Else. 
Van Damme was in a Schwarzenegger movie in the 90s, technically. I'll be and damned. As he's uncredited. He's uncredited. Fucking A. Just like he was uncredited in Predator because they was going to be in that movie together, but he didn't want it the role. He didn't want it. He can do his splits. But they got that guy that was uh, from Harry and the Hendersons to be the Predator for Predator 1. That tall that dude. Yeah. Well, I'll be damned. And he was in Predator 2 as well. Oh, he he wasn't dead yet by the time? Yeah, I know eventually no. he died. Yeah, it was like like the late 90s, I think, mid to late 90s. Yeah, that guy was a good actor. Mm-hmm. Costume actor, you know. Good costume actor. He's the one that came up with the movements and all that. Nobody directed him to do that. The way the Predator moved and the way he would stalk and everything, that was all done on the fly by that dude. And do you know this how? From the documentary. <laughs> yeah, we both watched um, it. The same yeah. one that showed me the, the original concept of what the Predator was going to look like. The Van Damme Predator. It looked like a bug, like a giant, like sci-fi channel like, movie bug. Like, yeah, it looked like a, a poop leg mantis. <laughs> yeah, it looked retarded. Like it was, that movie would not have succeeded if that had been what happened. <laughs> well, you never know. It could have. Give it a chance. Now, if they did a a, a, a B movie of that. Maybe they could use that concept, like a like a sci-fi channel movie of the Predator. They could probably. Oh, there's that. a bunch of them. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of them out there that you could tell they kind of tried to copy the Predator look and just named it something weird. Because the sperm whale ain't got shit on me. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> What's he gonna do once we step out of the water? Huh? We win. We need a right. land sperm whale movie. That's it. Hmm. Except for the Mosasaurus, he was able to grab the the what what was the the white one? The white one? The white dinosaur that's in the first Rhesus. <laughs> you know the oh, yeah, yeah, that's Rhesus. That's the Rhesus Jesus. The pufferfish dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. The the Indominus. The Allosaur. Indominus. Yeah. The, Remember the Indominus. The Mosasaurus <laughs> just went and jumped out of the water, grabbed his ass, and drug him back in. See, see now you're making up names now. <laughs> you know, the Chimichanga Nautosaurus. Yeah, Chimichanga. that's it. Chimichanga Thoris. <laughs> well, this was a good episode, guys. I had a lot of fun. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Appreciate episode it. Five. Love y'all. Appreciate episode y'all. Episode 5 is in the book. That's right. True Believers. One for the book. And until next time. What are we gonna do? Do we sauce it? for sale. I got Satchewan sauce for sale. Hit your boy up. I wonder how long that stuff, you know, what's the shelf life on that stuff? It can't last it's, forever. It's, there's it's, there's it's sugar a, in it. It lasts forever. Okay. As long as you As long as it's not been opened, the seal's is good, you know. It's seal of approval. Seal of approval. Of approval. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just when you watch the see, uh, episode one premiere of season four, then you can break it out and break it open and then dip your little nuggets in there. Then get back to us and tell us how it tastes. I'm selling this. I'm selling this Szechuan sauce. I'm not going to eat it. Uh-uh. It's worth too much money. So. No it's sperm right. whales were harmed during the recording of this podcast. <laughs> we're trying to get all these sperm whales from smoking jewel vape pins. <laughs> <laughs> Lander toys make a sperm whale three and three quarter inch scale. Oh, that oh wouldn't that be cool? Land, land, land here just dropping the ball now. Now I'm thinking about it. They should have made a, a Megalodon figure for the movie Meg. I'm disappointed in them. No, I saw some more uh, shark toys no, at didn't. Target this last time. And one Why? of them is a killer whale with jaw articulation. I don't know who makes what? it. What? Yeah, it's a killer it's whale with a shark me? two pack. An orca? It's a killer spermy whale. Sperming whale. <laughs> no, it's just a killer whale. No, that's just rhesus. In a two pack. Just because orcas are black, they deem them killer whales. That's rhesus. No, that's racist. And then rhesus. what does two pack have to do with this, you know? You paired it up with a great white shark. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course the shark is great because he is rhesus. And, and he's white, great white. He comes with a credit <laughs> score of 725 upon purchase. See, there you go. <laughs> Come on, Leonard. Give us a maid. When they, if they, when they make maid, too, I Send us some toys. Send us some toys. The Meg. The Meg, too. We need a Jason Statham figure. Yeah, man. You need to make somebody other than The Rock. I mean, they're obsessed with making little tiny three and three quarter inch rocks. Hey, he must have got a contract with them. So anything that he does, he, he, gets, he gets an action figure. I wonder if we could, like, yeah. message Lanyard, tell him who we are. Yeah, we can, man. Performance. You can send this to their Facebook. Somebody's got to look at it. They're a PR yeah. person. Like, email them, though. Tell them, okay, I have a social media platform I think could help your sales, you know. Maybe send me something to review. And they could start off small. Who knows? Well, well, watch, him send it, watch, watch Harry get all the product and me and Kevin didn't get shit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and he wouldn't even like it. He's like, I'm a trade. I'll be like, I'm not even a three and three quarter inch guy. I don't know why they sent it to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna melt it for fire. I'm gonna fire throw it away. <laughs> I'm gonna trade it for Star Wars. Yeah, oh, I would shit. do that. I would definitely trade it. <laughs> Go to your buddy shop in the mall and be like, Hey, you want some land? <laughs> <laughs> money, 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 money. <laughs> Fun fact, right. did you know Jimmy Hart produced that song? Million Dollar Man's really? uh, thing? Yep. There'll never be better wrestling entrance music than the 80s era stuff. Absolutely. 80s is the best. That's right. Everything was so real. It was real to the T. T down there. Rest in oh, peace, right fake there. Razor Ramon, whoever you were. Yeah. You didn't look nothing like Scott Hall, in my opinion. No. But he, he sounded he like him, money. but he didn't look like him. He made more money than us still, though. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I don't Damn. put the bar that high, so I don't I mean, other than my Saskatchewan <laughs> sauce business. <laughs> Damn it, I wish I wasn't such a fat pig. I ate it all when I bought them. You had the foresight yeah. to save it. I got four of them, y'all. Who's gonna Who's gonna get one of them for twenty five dollars? Shit. That I. Oh, it's free when it's not going one. in my Rick and Morty collection. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh no, no, you can't. Your dollars. collection ain't complete until you got one. Down there. To, to display with your Funko. <laughs> I'm gonna make it out of clay. There you go. Get one of them nuggets that Kevin has, the little nuggets from the Happy Meals back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Put them in Pickle his, pickle Rick's hand, dunking them in the sauce. That's true. That'd be dope. Diorama. Diorama, diorama. Hell yeah. Well, I guess it's a good time to cut it, right? Only I reckon so. Better cut <laughs> it now. Have we passed the hour again? I think so. I'm pretty sure we did. I think it's been 15 minutes, 40 minutes ago. <laughs> 45 minus 15 is one hour. Oh, I can tell you exactly what it is. It is an hour and 24 minutes now. Oh, 24, 24 hours ago it was an hour? An hour and 24 minutes. And how long have we been talking? I feel like we've been talking for like five hours straight. Yeah, because we were. We were talking on all kinds <laughs> of on Facebook. They don't know the pre-production process Guys, of doing this hard. all that oh, crap no. we did and we still ended up on the first <laughs> <laughs> by my Satchewan sauce and my killer whales no I'm uh, keeping those and, and don't forget the sperm whales too sperm and whales. pray for my diabetes yeah yeah pray to everybody Buddha Jehovah Yahweh whoever you believe in that Give me tree a that one tree that the Indians believe in, the master tree. Tree beard? No. Oh. This one is a peaceful tree. tree I like beard. tree beard, though. He likes tree to beard. fuck shit up. Yeah, he's a badass. How come, how come we ain't got that figure, Kevin? I want it. I've been wanting the 11 inch. What, the Lord of the Rings tree beard? You know how expensive yeah, that is? It's expensive. The toy no, the one? one? That 
Yeah. So Life with Brock. Ironic. Brock has those. That Aren't you, uh, uh, He's got them in storage, bro. You might be able to buy them off him. That guy, man. I made a tree beard, a custom, and he didn't even put it on his channel. <laughs> <laughs> you stuck some googly eyes on a pike cone and put yeah. arms legs on it. <laughs> and it was the only one I did. <laughs> it looked like a turd. <laughs> oh. Yeah, nothing. I'm gonna have to do that. Let's do a skit where we come up with some real shitty. This week in customs. Yeah, it'll be like a right. toilet, like the cardboard toilet roll. This week in savage. Yeah. Use the hashtag oh this week in savage, guys, and we will do nothing about it as you do that. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> Show us your words. We will ignore it. We're gonna ignore <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm gonna turn my nose up at you. This will promote any pictures of any kind. <laughs> We're all too lazy and bo- and tired, and we don't know how to do that. I mean, no, technology, no. technology doesn't work for us. <laughs> for some reason, nothing works. It's for like us. you're not on the income bracket to do this kind of thing, and like, oh, okay, sorry. No, <laughs> what's up with that? <laughs> Whenever, whenever the wife wants to watch some real sappy rom con, the internet's the best I've ever seen. Oh yeah, it don't ever buffer, right? <laughs> fiber optic shit. Right here. <laughs> and then I put on one thing, and it's like a little buffer. It's like, like yeah, you have dial up officially right now. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you better right. run, Kevin. <laughs> I know she's gonna get me. She heard that. She heard that. He's going to punch me right in the pancreas. <laughs> he knows where to wake up. Well, shit, then he won't need your uh, surgery then. The surgery already done for you, homemade. I know, bro. <laughs> It'll bust and I'll be done. We'll, be have, done to with kid, it. we'll have to kid bash Kevin. Damn yep. It. Let's I'll make Kevin cyborg. great again. <laughs> half cyborg, half potato. <laughs> <laughs> She just texted me to shut up up there. <laughs> and so she shut up well, there. <laughs> so she don't have to talk. That's funny. All right, guys. The game we'll go ahead and end it. How do we still have live? I don't know. Well, I'm on my fourth. I don't know about you. He's like, I'm on my fourth. I keep just... <laughs> it's, it's all a test for me. I'm just on my second. See? you got to keep trying. <laughs> Kim's like, I'm on my fourth. (laughs) So far, this one's been around longer than all of them. They ever find the bodies of the other three? Hell no. (laughs) Hell no. (laughs) My original, the town is like the woods, man. There's nothing. He's like, hell no. (laughs) They're all in the the Gulf of Mexico. (laughs) We're, we're big barbecuers where I'm from. <laughs> we're, we're big barbecuers where I'm from. <laughs> the sperm whales got them. Yeah. The sperm whale. I have a sperm whale as a pet. Gulf of Mexico sperm whale. <laughs> right, they ain't got shit on me. Sperm whale. It can come on land, too. <laughs> That's right. It everywhere. Walk. <laughs> My sperm whale comes everywhere. Sperm whale NATO. Sperm NATO. That's right. <laughs> Sperm NATO. <laughs> Sounds like a, a Peter North movie. <laughs> Good porn name. Yeah. <laughs> Sperm NATO. <laughs> we'll do five. <laughs> I'm going to end this before we go off the deep end. Oh, when are we going to get like... <laughs> YouTube's going to be like, this is for kids? <laughs> hey, old no flag this children's cock. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Just talking about toys. <laughs> <laughs> the overall message of this podcast is toys. Kids don't even like a lanyard. What the hell? Turn off the comments. <laughs> <laughs> and notifications. Take the lock button wanna... away. <laughs> Don't you don't get no bell. Videos. You can leave the dislike button though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thumbs down all that shit. It's already pre-turned on when you watch it. <laughs> yeah, it counts as a they got, they got to toggle off the dislike button if they don't. Look. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Stop oh, man. it. Take Stop away the ability to do thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> if they ever do that, Kevin's screwed, bro. I'll be oh, in trouble. He, if they ever <laughs> took custom thumbnails away from him, man, he's screwed, bro. <laughs> hey, they ain't got to worry about that with me. <laughs> no. I don't do thumbnails. Don't believe no. it. It somehow <laughs> works, too. It somehow <laughs> works for Dave's videos, though. Like, it always picks the best possible still of the video to be of them. Never fails. Scratching my ass or something. <laughs> what the hell? Would they give you about two or three to choose from? <laughs> Shit, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're using this one and that's it. <laughs> Ain't got yeah, they just they, they just pre-selected have, for me. Don't you have that little uh, app, the one that looks like a gear, the studio? Yeah, I do. Yeah, exactly. They don't give you a couple of choices when you go to edit thumb. I've never really got that far into that app. Yeah, man, you can edit the thumb on there, bro. Look into it. So I can. I'll write I your boy it. after your uh, order for a Saskatchewan sauce goes through. I'll tell you about it some more. <laughs> <Word> <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> And your pirate copy. You buy all four of my early. packets of Saskatchewan, that'd just be seventy five dollars for you. Yeah. you <laughs> <a> <laughs> oh, wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. A copy of Sperm NATO, pirate copy. Sperm NATO. <laughs> Dude, you better copyright that for real. I know, they're gonna steal it immediately. That's gonna show up on Pornhub tonight. <laughs> yep. Right. Sperm NATO will be live, man. In living color. All right, folks. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and end it there. True believers, until next time, episode six. You have a great week. Peace. Bye. Peace out. Bye. Thank you.